Welcome to the Tipping Point Show. I'm Jimmy Evans. I'm so glad you've joined me today. I have got a great interview with Jan Markell. She's an end times expert. She has been teaching on the end times for 40 years. She has a ministry called Olive Tree Ministries. Uh, she also has a radio program that goes on over 900 radio stations across the country and electronically around the world. You're going to want to see this interview with her. But I just want to say we had a terrific conference last Saturday at Fellowship Church here in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. Thousands of you attended in person. Thousands of others streamed online. I, I hope that you enjoyed the conference. We've gotten phenomenal feedback from that. And let me just say, if as a subscriber, if you're a subscriber to endtimes.com, here in about three more weeks, you're going to get the entire conference for free. Okay, we'll post it here on endtimes.com. Okay, if you're if you streamed, you get another 30 days uh, of free viewing uh, on your stream. If you were not at the conference uh, and you're a subscriber uh, and you want to see it in the meantime, you can go on conference.endtimes.com and you can purchase it at a 50% discount. I think that's like $25. If you're not a subscriber, it would be, I think it's $49 if you want to purchase it to be able to view the conference. But it was a phenomenal conference. I mean, Jonathan Kahn, Mark Hitchcock, Billy Crone, Ed Young, uh, Greg Laurie, myself, a lot of great teaching there, a lot of great things happened. And so thank you for being a part of it if you were, and if you weren't, you can still see it. Go to conference.endtimes.com. It's my great pleasure to have joining me today, Jan Markell. She is founder and director of Olive Tree Ministries, a ministry dedicated toward helping believers understand the times and be watchmen on the wall with an end time perspective. She is also the host of Understanding the Times radio program that now airs weekly on 900 radio stations and also electronically around the world. Jan, thank you for joining me today. Jimmy, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Well, I have admired your work for many years and you you are a forerunner of, of me for sure. You had very large conferences, end time conferences, and uh, you have your radio program and you also have your website, uh, Olive Tree Ministries, but I'm really glad that you've joined me today and we're gonna have a great conversation um, concerning just the things that are happening in the world, the convergence of the things that are happening in the world. And I like the word convergence because people, people say to you, and I know they say to me, every generation's had signs of the end times. Every generation has had an antichrist figure, or they've had earthquakes or famines or whatever. But we're the first generation to see the convergence. Exactly. Of, of all the signs. And so let's, let's talk about, let's begin with Russia in the Ukraine because this is a very significant thing. Some people saying that this is the beginning of World War III. So what do you think about that? Oh, and, and, and maybe it is, but, but my take on it is that any conflict that doesn't directly deal with Israel or indicate that it's going to ultimately end up in Israel, which of course Putin could end up uh, being Gog, and, and you know, that's kind of for a little bit later, but if it doesn't involve the Middle East, I don't get real concerned about it. I'm concerned for those that are suffering, and particularly in Ukraine. Um, but I think the question, Jimmy, is, is Vladimir Putin going to continue this aggression and continue the aggression and, and not just keep moving and try to take, say, the Baltics and some of those countries, but is he going to set his sights on the mountains of Israel? Does he want the natural gas in Israel? Does he want their high technology? And we don't have an answer to that. He certainly could. But I say until a leader puts their eyes on what they intend to do to Israel uh, by way of harm, by way of invasion, I just think that it's more wars and rumors of wars. Now, here's the game changer. The game changer would be if Vladimir Putin unleashed a nuke, because that then, right. I think, takes all of this to a, the next level. And, of course, he, he could. He's threatened to do that. And, and he's threatening it. That is and right. So at this point, you're saying you don't believe that it's certain that he is Gog. Well, he's Gog-esque, without a doubt. He yeah. he's acting like Gog. He's he's aggressive. He's evil. Um, he surely hates Israel. He surely wants what he can take from Israel. Um, 
he's aging. How much? How many years does he have? Left? Maybe he's got another 15 years left. He very, he very well may. Um, but I think we're so late in the game. I think we should keep our eyes on him and what would be his intent towards, uh, let's just say, wanting to seize a spoil, which is wealth, right. in Israel. And Israel has wealth, and I think he would like it. So if you start to see him, and he's... he's <laughs> I'm suspicious that, that he could be Gog. I'm going to leave it there because it is speculation. Let's talk about Iran for just a minute because I read an article this morning that Russia right now is tightening their alliance with Iran, yeah. which was already very tight. Yeah. So they're tightening their, their alliance there. Now, Iran, without a doubt, is a, is a bad actor. And they, they are, you know, uh, snubbing the international community related to their nuclear program that's going on. And so what, what is your belief? Uh, we know that they're, they have a nuclear program. We know that. And Absolutely. we know that eventually they're going to get a nuclear weapon. Where do you think they are in all that right now? Oh, I think they're on the threshold. And where this nuclear agreement is going, um, I, I don't think we quite know. Um, in spite of what some people may think about Donald Trump, he did some things right. And one of the things no. he did right <clears throat> was dump that, that nuclear deal with Iran, uh, which began in 2014-15 under Barack Obama, uh, which was the catastrophe of all international engagements, was this crazy, not only do we allow them nuclear capability um, and, and allow them the ability to put nukes on missiles and hit Europe and eventually hit America, right. but then we reward them with billions and billions of dollars. Yeah. This. Jimmy, to me, this is the, the essence of end time strong delusion. You can say this is just the nuttiness of a particular political party, and I would accept that. But this goes beyond that to actually finance, become friends with, shake hands with the nation of Iran. At the very same time, they're saying death to America and death yeah. to Israel. So it's it's utter insanity. But what did you folks think the last days would look like, just yeah. like they're looking today? Well, you're, you're talking about delusion there. And I made the comment at the conference that we had uh, this last weekend. You know, Second Thessalonians says God will give them over to strong delusion yeah. that they would believe the lie. Of course, Romans 1 says God gave them over to a depraved mind. And my comment there was deception is caused because we have wrong information or because the devil deceived us. But delusion comes from God that delusion right. is when God simply takes uh, the ability from a person to even recognize the truth. And you see the foolishness that's going on right now, the sexualization of children uh, exactly. in America from the White House, it's delusional to hear these people talk about what they intend to do with the you know transsexualism and all that kind of stuff. So we live in a deluded society just the way the end should look. Right, but and I, but I think the days of Noah were that way too. Yep. Um, and, and again, we had, you know, we don't have to get into the Nephilim, but but we had the aberration of the Nephilim, and and and, and we had strong delusion, and we had hardening of hearts, so that there are only eight really righteous people on the planet. Well, we obviously the church is still here, so we have far more than eight, but it's a dwindling number. It's a small mm -hmm. number of of the righteous. Um, and so I think the comparison when the Bible says the last days will be as the days of Noah. Hello. I mean, it should be really. And, and your illustration is perfect, uh, Jimmy. And that is um, what society wants to make little boys, girls and little girls, boys. And not only that, parents encourage this. Parents want their little girl to become a little boy. What kind of delusion is this? And again, has God just turned them over? I think the four scariest words in the Bible are God gave them over. Right. To me, that says, I'm done with you. I've tried to, to, I've tried to give you the truth. You won't accept the truth. Um, you're turning only to evil. I'm turning you over to this reprobate mind. That's a scary place. That's a scary place. And I said, I've said this many times, but um, I started preaching on the end times uh, in 1982, 40 years ago. I never dreamed that I would live in this world. Right. You know, I, I never dreamed it would get this bad. I thought it would get bad, but not this bad. Yeah. 
And so you wake up now and you, you see the, the sexualization of children. They also, there's a push to change the designation of pedophiles to minor attracted persons. Right. And, and to destigmatize that, which is unbelievable in any society. Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> there are things going on. I mean, just, just, I mean, changing streams just a little bit, but you know, I, I'm here in Minneapolis. I, my office is 20 minutes from, from where the George, George Floyd incident happened in 2020. And what came from that? The delusion of let's defund the police. Well, yeah. how's that working out for, for those of you in cities like Minneapolis, where I am? I've lived here all my life. It was a perfectly beautiful city, absolutely gorgeous. Now, since they're defunding our police, it's just crime everywhere. I mean, no one is safe, not even in the suburbs. And again, this comes from this delusional, God gave them over mindset. Let's take away our police. We don't need police. Are you kidding me? So again, r r irrational thinking that is for sure end time-ish that, uh, again, goes back to the days of Noah. This is how they thought back then. Do you think we're seeing the fall of America. Oh, well, I was um, ministering with with Jack Hibbs and actually Michelle Bachman a year ago, um, right after the Afghanistan debacle, and w w all of us at that conference. It would have been September of 2021. All of us were grieving over what we felt back in September 2021 was the turning point for America, the, the point at which America stepped off the international stage, at the point in time at which America no longer became the world leader, uh, thanks to Mr. Biden, and that would be the, the Afghanistan debacle and, and, and leaving people behind, et cetera. We indicated at that time that we were, we were no longer the world leader and look at the consequences of America not leading. They're yeah. staggering. As we speak, millions are suffering. And you, whether it's Ukraine, you can find other areas of conflict. Um, because America is not leading. Uh, America, because we've led for certainly 100 years, um, we've had some stability. Obviously, we've had world wars here, but we've had post-World War II, great stability, great prosperity, now we lack a leader, both nationally and internationally, and everything is coming to pieces. Uh, of course, my saying is everything's falling into place. So these things have to happen. That's right. So things aren't falling apart. They're falling into place. Well, President Biden is um, a disappointment, to say the least, related to leadership on every level. But when you look at the globalism that's going on today, of course, right. he is very much a part of the World Economic Forum. Right. been a keynote speaker for them. And you have all these elites that come over to Switzerland every year and they have a they have an agenda. And their agenda, part of their agenda is the demise of America from being right. a superpower. Uh, and, and really for there not to be the superpowers are today. Talk about globalism and what's happening about globalism. Well, again, globalism is outlined in the Bible uh, very clearly. I think the most obvious chapter would be would be Revelation 13. And, and, and I think the thing, Jimmy, that I emphasize almost the most in both my radio outreach and, uh, and other things, my teaching, etc., uh, would be the rise of this World Economic Forum, this Klaus Schwab and his, his pals, Yuval Harari and Bill Gates, and there's just a whole lineup of them that are wheeling and dealing and scheming and smoke-filled rooms to have the World Economic Forum become the global one world government. But, you know, here's the thing. If that's true, and I do believe it is, and I do believe um, the fact that we're lacking a global leader is pushing us towards one worldism and a single global leader, um, how late is the hour? I believe that right. this whole great reset, I believe the reset is the tribulation. And so we're in a run up to that tribulation, um, I, I believe the four horsemen of the apocalypse are, you know, over a cliff about to uh, about to appear. <laughs> the church has to disappear first. Yeah, 
um, so so globalism has to happen. But you know what had to happen before that could happen? America has to decline. Right. And so it's 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 of the Lord. As hard as it is to watch, every one of your listeners and viewers is brokenhearted to see America's decline in the last 40 years and certainly the last 10, 12, 15 years. But it had to happen so that this globalist effort and I believe it's being orchestrated by World Economic Forum, again, Klaus Schwab. Yeah. Um, it's, it's on the horizon. It's on the horizon. But that means the church is going to be gone. Well, I believe the church is going to be raptured soon. I know that you agree with that. Imagine a world, Jan, where the, the delusion is like it is right now and the church is gone. And yes. There's no, there's no restraining influence. You know, the, the, literally, you have the delusional mindset that is the global mindset, which ushers in the Antichrist, and they, anything he says, they're gonna believe because they're set up for it right now. But this is exactly. the first time in my lifetime where I know that I'm living in an Antichrist world. I think if we were to try to pick out a single, and I'm cautious with this, but a single manifestation going on that would indicate how late the hour is, it would be the rise of this antichrist spirit, whether it's the yeah. lawlessness, yeah. which we see every night on the news, yeah. um, whether it's countries like Putin acting the way he's acting and and doesn't care what the world what the world leaders are telling him. It's just nuts to you. I'm going to do what I want to do. It's or 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 in Washington, if that is an utter lawlessness going yeah. on in Washington D.C. Yeah. Uh, and, of course, that's one of the major signs of the last days. I mean, that's heavily in the tribulation, and much of what we're talking about is heavily in the tribulation. But the point is, we're in this run-up to that tribulation. It's so obvious, and the only way to look at it and have hope is, hooray, the king is coming. That's right. It could be today. That's right. Well, the birth pangs, you know, Matthew 24, yeah. Jesus talked about birth pangs. Those birth pangs are happening right now, aren't they? Yeah, they're going to explode in the tribulation, but... There's always, again, we're, <laughs> one of the most frequent things I keep saying is we're trending towards the tribulation. Yeah. <laughs> so when we see the catastrophes, and believe me, they're heartbreaking. I mean, it's hard to watch them as we see uh, parts of the world, the hurricanes, the floods, the fires, you, you name it. Um, these are just a foretaste of what's going to happen in the tribulation. Nothing that's happening today can even come close to the catastrophes of the tribulation. Okay. Why? Which is why it is so important that anybody listening, you know, you don't want to go through that and there's a way to escape it and that's to claim Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and then along with the church we're going to exit before this terrible time of ultimate birth pangs which explode in the in the tribulation. But we're seeing again that run up. I believe God's sending warnings. He's. I believe every catastrophe is a warning from God. Are you ready? If not, get your heart ready. Well, he's certainly not going to let you be comfortable in this world without no. a warning, without a warning that something's happening. So in, in Matthew 25, when Jesus is talking about the parables of the virgins, the steward, and then the true story of the sheep and the goats, the parable of the virgins uh, tells us that according to Jesus, when he returns, about half the church will be false. In other words, there were five wise virgins that were ready and knew the bridegroom. There were five foolish virgins. They associated themselves with the bridegroom, but they were walking in darkness and didn't know him. And so do you believe that there is a lot of deception that has infiltrated the church in these last days? That's probably the second most frequent theme that I address um, would be the, <laughs> shall we say, the wolves among the flock. Yep. And I'm actually going to tape a radio program tomorrow about this. And, you know, you and I could could probably do three hours on this topic almost nonstop because after the biblical references to the rebirth of Israel, which are legion, second to that would be all the biblical verses People are not going to give heed to sound doctrine. They're going to, they're going to turn to the doctrine of demons. There are going to be wolves among the flock. So in the New Testament, the constant reference, and then there's, I mean, there's the true church. I mean, there's Laodicea, but there's also the truth. People are going to still hold on to truth. But 
are the number of people that are holding to truth getting fewer and fewer and fewer? According to the emails I get, people can't even find solid fellowship today. Uh, and they may be in, they may even be in a Bible preaching church, which is getting harder and harder to find, by the way. That's, That's right. the most frequent email that comes in here. Um, but they're lacking meaningful fellowship. They're lacking a church that preaches the whole council. In other right. words, Genesis through Revelation. And they'll approach their pastor and they'll say, could we do a, could you do a series on the last days? And he'll come up with, with twenty reasons why we can't we can't go there. We can't talk about that. It's controversial. Right. I, you know, I could go on and on and on. But going back to your question, um, I think that the wolves among the flock today. It's very scary. People go into a church uh, in good faith, thinking that the pulpit is solid, and then a year later, absolute craziness comes from the pastor. And here's what's happened, at least since the George Floyd incident, the church went woke. I mean, again, that's okay. another program, but the church went yeah, woke. The church went woke. Yep, and that's social justice. we got to embrace LGBT, the, the, the social gospel, right. and it is destroying our churches. Well, I have a lot of friends that preach the gospel, the, the, the total counsel of the Word of God, and they have people walking out their doors every time they preach. And and the good thing is they're willing to do that. Many many pastors are not willing. Right, right. They want, right. they want to be popular. But one of my friends, uh, they were dealing with this uh, transsexualization happening in the public schools. Now, these are very conservative communities with very liberal school boards. And so my friend, one of my friends began to confront the school board. Uh, and he began to preach about it from the pulpit. Uh, this is what's happening in our community and whatever. Well, most of the church supported it, but he said, I was shocked at the number of families that had been in the church for 20 years that confronted me and said, we support that. We, we don't like your tone. Okay. And, and he was very gracious, very kind, but they didn't like the fact that he was talking bad about transsexuals. Uh, and the, the school board's trying to sexualize children beginning in kindergarten and those kinds of things. And this school board was using a curriculum that they got from Lady Gaga on really? sexualization. Yes, it was really? unbelievable. And then another one of my friends did a series on woke uh, to the church. Again, very good preacher, very graciously done. And a backlash came to him. Now, most of his people supported it. But the, the and many, many pastors won't teach on the end times, Jen, even though 30% of the Bible is exactly in nature. And so when you're not preaching on the end times, you're leaving out a lot of the Bible. And people are so anxious with your ministry and with our ministry. One of the most common comments we get is how people are comforted by yep. knowing. So you've already said it on this, this podcast right here. You've already said Jesus is coming. You know, All these bad things that are happening are pointing to the fact that Jesus is coming. So this is a comforting message. Jimmy, I, I so agree with you, and that's why it's so puzzling. Um, I mean, I go to Second Peter 3 with the kind of the exhortation, um, in the last days people are going to say, where is the promise of his coming? I just, think, I just think that means that the whole topic that's near and dear to you and me and your followers and, and my followers, people are going to brush it off, scoff, mock, uh, condemn you for believing it. Right. Um, I had one lady who emailed me a year or two ago, and she said, I'm afraid to talk about I, she, she used the word fearful. I, I, I'm fearful and afraid to talk about the fact that the king is coming back. Because I think what she meant, she gets such pushback from it, from f family, friends, and pr oh. and even her church. This, to me, is a complete travesty that we now have people who are holding back, speaking this truth that you and I <laughs> rather boldly proclaim. People are now afraid that they are losing friends. They're losing church people yeah. because yeah. it's controversial. It might be perceived as doom and gloom. And then we've got the Herald Campings who blew everything right. by m making yeah. a mockery of it and setting dates. And I don't blame anybody for running from the kind of the nutty fringe in eschatology, the campings and others who have really done damage. They've done damage. The, 
most most Christians, uh, most Christian denominations are amillennial. They, yes, they, they are. They don't believe yep. in a literal millennium. Uh, they that's believe right. sa Satan was bound at the resurrection of Jesus. If you can make that work in your worldview, that's that's yeah. Special. Good luck with that. Yeah, good luck with that. But then you have the post millennials, uh, mm -hmm. and they believe the kingdom now kind of kingdom theology. Now. So, so talk about that. Talk about the some of the those false doctrines in the church related to eschatology. I think the biggest change in my lifetime, and, and I've been in ministry 40 years here, but the biggest change in my lifetime as it concerns the church would be when I was growing up in my Baptist church, we had frequent messages on the importance of Israel, Israel and prophecy, Israel and end times. Um, they never talked about the church is going to prosper and it's going to turn the world around. Now, granted, the church does some missions and all that's hugely important. Um, but but what I have seen in the last probably 20, 25 years is the rise of this kingdom now, dominionism. It might also, maybe years ago, it went by the term latter reign, right. reconstructionism. Right. Uh, but let's keep it simple. Kingdom now simply means that uh, and a lot of denomin lots of denominations embrace this, that the church will indeed make the world pretty perfect. And, and, and then when the church has cleaned up the earth, Jesus can come back. Now, how's that working out, folks? How's That's that right. working out? Yeah. Obviously it's not, because it's a false teaching. But it, I would say it's the fastest growing. It's the biggest change in, in the last 30 to 40 years. Um, the church, the Bible says the church is going to go into apostasy. It's going to become Laodicea. Yeah. It's not going to save the planet. So, again, I, I never thought I would see the day when, and, and then, Jimmy, the sad part of that is all eyes go off of Israel, which is the key to everything. Exactly if we don't keep right. our eyes on Israel, that's that's the time clock to God's end time plan. And that's what we need to be watching is Israel, not the church. Yes, well, look at the look at Jesus, very graphic illustration of the days of Noah and the days of Lot. Did, yep. did Noah didn't have a convert and Lot that's lost right. his wife and his sons-in-law. You know, that's I right. mean, that, that's not a, so Jesus is talking about, we're going to be in the vast minority, a righteous yeah. remnant in the midst of an extremely evil, ungodly world just before we get rescued and there's cataclysmic judgment over here. And the kingdom now stuff to see, uh, and I'm sure you've heard about this, but last Thursday, just about 10 miles from where I'm sitting in DFW airport, five perfect red heifers were flown to Tel Aviv, Israel. Did you hear about that? Right. Of well, course. There are many, many people like you and me that were thinking, oh my gosh, you know, now they can rebuild the temple and this, this is a big deal. There are many people that don't like this because they're hanging on to replacement theology there you go. They believe when the first temple was destroyed that God divorced the Jews. He has nothing to do with them. They're no longer a part of history. And of course, when they came back in 1948, that was an annoyance to them. And every biblical prophecy that's been happening ever since has been an annoyance. But the fact that they could rebuild the third temple, it, it just continues to, it's hard to believe when you're looking at the reality of the world today, it's hard to believe that they hang on to the fact that the church is going to go into this glory age and we're going to you know overtake all those kinds of things and there's nothing wrong obviously with the with the church standing our ground until Jesus comes and yeah. doing all Absolutely. the good we can do and taking all the people that we can take but the bible simply doesn't paint the picture of a victorious world world conquering church when Jesus returns and yet why is it perhaps the fastest growing theology along with replacement theology uh, in the church. Again, I think the church today, not not all, but so many have slipped into Laodicea. Yeah. I, I'm not so sure we even have time to turn that around. I mean, I, I'm i one who expects the rapture imminent any, any day. I mean, I That's think... I think if those of us who are watching what's going on and trying to interpret it from a biblical perspective, it's obvious things are winding down. Yeah. It's obvious time is running out. And by the way, time is running out for people to uh, name Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So, I mean, that that's kind of a, an ominous warning. 
Um, but 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 things are winding down so fast, uh, even since in the last five years, even in the last year. And I think a huge turning point was COVID. Um, and COVID created a new mindset, yeah. not just in America, not just in the Western world. 200 nations changed the way they did business because of COVID. Yeah. They went along with whatever the government mandates were. They surrendered to government dictates. This is 200 nations. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I think they looked for almost a global savior. Uh, to to keep them well, so to speak, and then they turn to government to keep them well. So I, I think COVID was a turning point two and a half years ago. Um, I don't think that mindset is going away. I mean, maybe the pandemic is slowing down, though I think that's another program. But I think that, that COVID was a huge wake-up call uh, to the world and the church. Absolutely. A lot of people watching right now, Jan, they're good-hearted Christian people who love Jesus, how can they stand strong in the midst of all that's going on in the world until Jesus comes? Well, we know God has not only everything under control, God is allowing everything to happen. He certainly is not causing, uh, not perpetrating all the evil that we see, but things have to there's a roadmap in the Bible, and and so much of that roadmap is we're now on the highway that's leading towards the very end of the end, and I think that that makes this a very exciting, though challenging, generation to live in. Yeah. And but God, God has orchestrated everything. He said the end times would be perilous. He said that uh, there would be delusion in the end times. Um, he said that we need to be uh, encouraging one another, Hebrews 10.25. And I, I want to encourage your listeners to be in some form of fellowship, even if it's a home fellowship, yeah. have some kind of support around them. If they can't find a church, and I hear from many who can't, at least get into some kind of a fellowship. Because if, if you're not going to be encouraging one another, Hebrews 10.25, <clears throat> you won't make it. Right. You won't make it without some kind of physical or emotional collapse because things aren't going to get better. And I know people are putting a lot of faith and trust, say, in the elections of 2022 and 2024 and going back to normal. My own opinion is going back to normal probably isn't ever going to happen. We're too late in the game. A trumpet is going to sound any day. The church is going to be removed. Those left behind are going to have something unspeakable to deal with. It's called the time of Jacob's trouble. Yeah. Jacob, by the way, is Israel, not the church. Um, but I encourage people to be encouraged because for some reason, God called every listener to you and me to be a part of this generation for a yeah, reason. Right. And I think it's to be salt and light and delay the decay, proclaim the gospel, and to encourage people to look up. Jesus is coming any day. That's right. I want you to read. You have a Sure. Uh, I'm taking a trip, if you wouldn't mind reading that. Okay, I, I didn't write this, but I often close with this. It's written by um, ministry supporter, Sandy Tuzinski. And um, one of your producers asked if, if I could share it, and this will take about a minute and a half, and she writes this, and I hope it does encourage. She says, she says, I'm taking a trip to a foreign country, a country I've never seen before. This will be much different than previous trips. She says, I won't need to pack any clothing, no glasses, no medications. My passport has been purchased and authorized with a great price. She says, the tour guides on th this secure flight will be courteous and swift, and I will pass through security like a breeze. I guess this is a round trip. And there will be a layover celebration before I will be returning with an enormous tour group made up of many horse riding folks. And then she says, there is still room on this flight and I hope you will be coming, but you ha you'd best hurry as the standby list is filling up fast, the red eye too, and time is running out. And then she concludes, 
be ready to depart in an instant and keep watch on the overhead screens because you do not know what time or gate we will depart from. And then she says, a new name will be given to me in this new country, so my name tag will change, but you will still be able to recognize me by my beaming smile. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And that's why what we have to share, Jimmy, is the yeah. best news ever. The King is coming, and we are going to live with the Lord Jesus Christ forever and ever and ever. And if folks would like a copy of this, just write us through olivetreeviews.org, olivetreeviews.org. I'd be happy to send them a copy of this. I, we've sent hundreds and hundreds of these, so feel free to write, folks. That's fantastic. And, and Jan, how can, they, how can people listen to your radio program? Well, we're on uh, between 900 and 1,000 radio stations. The easiest way is to go to olivetreeviews.org and go to syndication or just listen on our website. It's, we post new programming um, once a week, and it airs on our 900 stations on Saturday and Sunday. We're, uh, we've been doing it since 2001, and uh, I've met so many wonderful people, including your friend and my friend, Mark Hitchcock, yes. who's one of my uh, closest confidants and, and uh, is part of the radio outreach as well. Well, you have a great website, tremendous resources on Jan's website. Jan, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. God thank bless you. you. And if you're watching this on YouTube, I want you, we're about to go into the subscriber portion of our program. Uh, I'm going to answer some questions that our subscribers have written. If you're not a subscriber, go to endtimes.com. It's $7 a month, $77 a year. You can become a subscriber. You get the full podcast. Also, our articles and videos that come out all week long on endtimes.com. If you're not a subscriber, we want you to become, become a subscriber today. If you are a subscriber, you cannot watch the entire program on YouTube. If you're on YouTube, go to endtimes.com to see the entire podcast. If you're a subscriber, stay tuned.